Fuck yeah, everybody. Here we are. How you guys doing? Okay, fuck yeah. I love it. Good to be here. Hi, guys. Where are you guys from? California. Cool. Welcome. Um, how are you, Brian? I'm glad you're alive. I know. We, we oh almost my God. lost Tony this weekend. Uh, we were in Houston, Dallas, and Austin for the weekend, and yeah. every night we were just... Our show started at 7 o'clock. Yeah, which is a big mistake for us because then you're having fun at 7 o'clock in a city in which you know that you're going to hang out at bars after that. So if the show's at 7 instead of 9 or 10, fuck, man, because you're, you're already going at 8.30. God help you if, like, by the second night what happened was is we were hungover because we're driving from city to city and also having so much fun at night. <clears throat> There's some of that fun right there. So by the second night, uh, we had, or by the third night, I had a shot before I went on stage just to feel better. So then you have a shot and a drink, and you're on stage, and it's 7.25. Yeah, and we had no sleep in between days at all. Like, it was right. literally wake up, puke almost, drive to the next city, try to eat. Like, we ate Long John Silver's at a Shell gas station. And, that, and that's true, and that was our one meal on Saturday. Yeah. Because we had a 7 o'clock show, so you get to the hotel at 5.30, you have one hour to try to nap and relax and gain the momentum for a big, sold-out fucking Rock Club Dallas show, which was awesome, but 7 p.m.s are something else, man. Yeah, I couldn't even eat the Hush Puppy at Long John Silver's, too, so I had, like, two pieces of shrimp, like, one bite of a Hush Puppy, and, like, two fries, and it's immediately, when we got to the show, uh, the last show in Dallas... Uh, people are buying us shots. We're doing just too much alcohol, and I don't know what happened that night. We went because the shows were so much fun, yeah. and then when the shows are really, really, really fun, you're like, "Shit, we can't be stopped." <laughs> so then you're having more drinks and more fun. Not to mention, we went to a bar called Concrete Cowboy. If you ever go to Dallas, yeah, you have to check this crazy shit out. Oh, yeah. They have this big wheel that you turn. And Tony's like, let's go walk around. And I'm like, I don't want to walk around. And then finally, he's like, no, let's come on, let's go. And so I get up, we walk, and we're going by this wheel, and this woman, like, lands on Kiss a Stranger. As we're walking by. And so this girl just deep tongues me, and I don't even know what she looks like, because I'm just, like, I see just eyebrows and Cut forehead. to Brian 15 <laughs> seconds before looking at me in the eyes going, why would you want to walk around, man? <laughs> What's possibly going to happen out there? <laughs> So I'm freaking out, excited. What when? I mean, she went really deep on you. I know. It was almost like she landed on the wheel, like it was like kiss a stranger, fall in love, try to get him to fucking. Yeah, and then my friend gives her like every single like all my information, like oh here's his his website, here's his email address, and what did you say she looked like? She looked like I don't a, remember some Amy Schumer's sister or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well. Uh, you know who we, we talked a lot to the fans about Kill Tony uh, when we were there, and a lot of them brought up our head of security. He's here again, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for the Iron Patriot. Right. I will lead these new Avengers into battle against anyone who would threaten our way of life. I am the Iron Patriot. Fuck yeah, you are. Man, we, uh, we, we pulled a fast one on the audience in Houston. We were doing oh a live God, podcast. Yeah. The first thing we did was this podcast in Houston, which was awesome, man. So check that out. Find that. And, uh, and uh, one of the first things we did was, you know, it's just me and him sitting up there before we brought the guests out. And we, we were explaining, like, oh, we wanted to bring Kill Tony, but, you know, we couldn't think out the logistics of bringing the Iron Patriot and his, all his gear and stuff. And then basically we're just like, just kidding. Put your fucking hands together, Houston, for the Iron, Iron Patriot. Patriot. And, and this people fucking stood crowd, up. the looks on their faces, I actually <laughs> felt bad. Because I didn't think they would get as excited as they did. But there were, there were, there was a couple, especially these guys, like these, you could tell they were just like, uh, like you would have thought we fucking said, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Pryor hey, or something like that. Hey, you know that like girl, that. Michelle Carroll, that was on the panel with you? She had an old picture. She's, I've, had, I've exchanged some messages with her through the f last few weeks. She had an old picture of me and my old Iron Man. Yeah, and did you see that costume, how ridiculous that was? That was hilarious. Yeah, check that out. I, I, tweet, I retweeted it or yeah, tweeted I it the other day. That. That, 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 was a, that was a strange costume. Yeah, your old costume is a trip. Yeah, yeah. complete with fanny pack. Joe Rogan would have even appreciated that one. But you know, it's weird. It's, it's like, a, like a real superhero, like the beginning of a Spider-Man or whatever. They always have like their, their first costume. Yeah. 
yeah. So it's actually kind of cool because that's like your. Uh, yeah, Iron Man was my first love. That's that's, yeah. that's definite. But um, I had an exciting week too, Tony, because I got lucky with another picture with a celebrity. Uh -huh. On Saturday night, I ran into Jason Mewes. And I know Red Band knows this guy, but did you see his film that came out in 1994 called Clerks? No. Yes. So you're, are you a fan of Jay and Silent Bob? Yeah. Well, it was a beautiful moment. I got the picture with him. I put on Kill Tony again, and he put some other stuff on that he wants to get a funny on with me. He's going to be here at the Comedy Store on March 6th to do a show with Kevin Smith. And, um, I mean, I know we always have guest um, stand-up comedians on here, but... If, you know, he was kind of receptive to being on the show, if him and Kevin Smith came on, that would be kind of an interesting combination because they do comedy and films together with you guys. March um, 6th is a Thursday. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm just saying, if they're already coming to the club, maybe some time on the week before, I don't know. If it could, I'm just saying, when I talked to him, he was real cool. He was real receptive. He loves the comics. He loves Iron Patriot. So, um, you know, the picture took off on the Internet. People loved it. I mean. Red Band retweeted it, and it did even better than the R.J. Mitty from Breaking Bad. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. But, I mean, what, 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 are, your, what are your business. thoughts on that? Does it have to be a stand-up comedian that comes on as a guest, or can there might might there be some other types of people? Oh, absolutely. I, I would oh, say yeah, that. totally. And any kind of artist that could appeal to the masses. You know, I, I have an exciting one who I'm going to tell you right now is coming on, because I almost had him today. But he had to go do something. I'm just going to say it. In the upcoming weeks, one of my guests on this show is going to be Rowdy Roddy Piper. Everybody. He's coming in. He's a buddy of mine, one of the coolest guys ever. One of the smartest dudes I, you'll ever meet in your entire life. He's a monster. And he was in WrestleMania 1. And he's been doing basically sold out arenas since then. And he's known as the comedian that knows how to entertain. Like he put... He, he had a show called Piper's Pit, which was the first time that re any wrestler really even had the mic and would do things and talk to millions of people who were so entertained. Really changed the game. So I'm really excited to have him on. What made me think about that? Oh, yeah. Jason, of course. Yes, yes. It, it, we would have Jason on the show, Patriot. That's um, a great question. Before we bring the guest on, um, what, one thing I wanted to ask you, you mentioned that Tony Clifton is going to come on the show. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I was reading about him. And there's such a mystery about uh, who he really is. He, is. Do you think he's Bob Zamuda? Because Bob Zamuda's been at this club before. So is that who it is? Or do you think it's... Who could it be? That's an interesting question, Patriot. I'm re yeah, it could be... Who knows who it could be? I'm, I would have to guess Bob Zamuda, but I'm not positive. Yeah. I wanted to get that straight with you before he comes so, so we can kind of get that figured out. I like to believe in that mystery. I love yeah. the Andy Kaufman yeah. stuff. Big yeah. fan. I'm wearing my Buddy Hackett jacket that I got on the Christmas show from Jeff Ross. I'm very excited about that while we're yeah. talking about great comedians. Yeah. Um, and uh, while we're also talking about great comedians, why don't we talk about our guest tonight, everybody? It's Kill Tony 33. Are you guys excited or what? Yeah. Got to hear about our weekend. Now it's time for a new epi a Monday episode, as always, of Kill Tony. Uh, my guests tonight, I'm so excited to have them, and uh, I'll mostly tell you why after they're up here. But uh, uh, two, uh, another two great friends of mine, comedians that I've done the road with and work have worked with regularly for a while. Put your hands together for them, everybody. It's Mike Lawrence and Tiffany Haddish. Wow. Oh, yes. This is the music that Mike demanded we play. <laughs> he, he will not come up to any other song. It's in his rider. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing Nothing says, like, being beaten up and called a queer in high school like Jock Jams Volume 5. There you go. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> that guy, that's that guy's career. Just the guy was like, you all ready for this? He was ready for that and nothing else and has been poor ever since. I bet you can go to Skid Row and there's like a homeless guy who's just like, y'all ready for this? I know I wasn't. Fame is a bitch. Fuck yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you guys on because uh, you're so different and so much fun. Tiffany, we just did a, she was the third on our Texas tour. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had a lot of fun. Tiffany introduced me to the powers of Pedialyte. Yes, Pedialyte is a powerful substance that can really help you when you're drinking way too much. <laughs> we, we pretty much freaked out the whole city of Austin. We, we bought these huge gallons of Pedialytes and just 
driving around. Somebody was driving us around drunk, screaming at people on the streets like, Pedialyte! Yeah, Pedialyte, like, are you having problems satisfying your woman? Drink Pedialyte, it'll make your big, your dick bigger or some shit yeah, like that. I said, I was fucked up. Were you about to say your bit digger? <laughs> yeah, I was. I'm already fucked up today. <laughs> uh, Tiffany, can I talk to you? Oh, yes, you can. I, I was watching you. Red Band's Twitter, and I, mm -hmm. I saw when you joined the tour when it got to Austin. Yeah. And it was one vine after the another of you singing and dancing. You got a lot of energy. Yeah, when I'm intoxicated, yes. Yes. I noticed even at the airport on Sunday you were still dancing. Oh yeah, I was sobered in. It was, was embarrassing. on. I just wanted to scare white people. That, that was, was embarrassing. My mission, just dance in the but, airport. Let me say this though, though, on the curtain club show, I looked at the vine. You put the microphone down at your butt, a strange sound came out. It wasn't now, my butt that I put it to. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a strange sound. It was familiar. <laughs> was that a fart, shark, or queef? What was that? Who, whose butt was it? Yeah, first off, it wasn't a butt. It was a vagina, and it, it, that was called oh. a queef. Oh, okay. Or pussy talk. That was bubbling, a bubbling brook. That, that had some good sound to it. You like that? Don't play with me. Do you vibrate? <laughs> why does the Iron pa Why does the Iron Patriot sound like Mr. Tasty from Pete and Pete? It just sounds like I was with you last summer, but now I have to go to make other children happy. It's like it's like a Puerto Rican that wanted to start a pride parade and found an Iron Man costume and painted it. Mike, That's... I want to talk to you. Let me talk to you. A little wait, bit wait. Do you, get, yeah. do you actually want to hear this queef that you're talking about? Yeah. Would you guys like to hear this? She did this oh as God. a closer. <laughs> After her, her set. That, that was only because it was requested. All right, here we go. <laughs> wow, that's a weird queef. <laughs> Electrical what? issues in my uterus. <laughs> what? Oh <laughs> my. Wow. <laughs> that's the sound Michael Winslow is going to make when he dies. <laughs> 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 now, Mike, let me talk real quick before we get the show going. Yeah, um, I, I remember you, Iron Patriot, yes. first appearance, Dark Avengers, 2009, yes. written by Michael Bendis, drawn by Mike Diallo yes, Jr. Yes, yes, I met him down the block a couple blocks, wow. and he, he won my heart right away because he knows that I'm the Norman Osborn, a.k.a. Green Goblin. I, I stole the Iron Man suit, painted it red, white, and blue. I tricked America into thinking I was patriotic. That would be a good movie, wouldn't it, Mike? Wow. Oh man, what, what, what do you, what, am I too old when my childhood is talking to me and I don't know what to say back to it? Why did Dad leave us again? Why, why, why was Papa in the driveway? Uh, uh, Mike, let me say something about your life. I was reading today. At the age of sixteen, you started working at a McDonald's in Florida. You, you learned how to deal with hecklers because Damn. people call. This is my guardian nothing. angel, by the way. He's supposed to tell me not to commit suicide yeah, on Christmas. You, you learned how to deal with hecklers. People in the drive-thru were calling for McNuggets. Now, it took you over 10 years to get your career going. Uh -huh. now, now, what I want to say is, last September, you wrote an article for the Huffington Post, and this article was titled, The Five Things I Learned from Doing Comedy in New York City, and I'd Pass Along to Younger Comics. What are those five points? Because these comics would love to hear it. I mean, well, first off, it's weird because your voice sounds like everyone who was mean to me in a drive through <laughs> Like, just the quality of it. <laughs> I just like I, I guess I should answer your question, but also give you a McRib. Uh, um, uh, well, the first I, I don't exactly remember, but one of them was about how um, you should only be bitter about the things you're eligible for. I think that's really important for comics. I mean, I have been skipped by BET Comic View for the past five years, despite incredible floppy pussy jokes, and I don't know why. Um, another another was have a life outside of comedy. I, I have a fiance, and um, I'm the first person to look like this and say that. Uh, that's an achievement in itself. Right, Jesus? Yeah, you found someone. Yeah, He does look <laughs> just like, like took, Jesus. He doesn't he? Yeah, yeah like Jesus' nephew or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why did they stick me to the cross? Because I stole a hacky sack and said <laughs> Dave Matthews Band's last album was so par. <laughs> you are a special kind of Jesus. Yeah. Isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. There's something from the peanut gallery. Yeah. That was her minute, right? <laughs> yeah, that was that. Now she only gets 55 seconds. Um,. <laughs> Fuck yeah, so you guys know what we're doing here. Comedians come up and they do a minute a piece and we chat with them. Cool. Awesome. You guys ready to get this thing started? Kill Let's Tony go. 33.
with two people that I've had so much fun with. Uh, comedians come up. Uh, you guys, most of you guys know the deal. You get 60 seconds. At the end of that 60 seconds, you know your time's up because you'll hear the meow of a kitty. That's just her queefing. Uh. <laughs> you'll hear the queef of a kitty. <laughs> Me ouch! <laughs> narf, narf, why, you know, why is it smelling here? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's okay. It smells good like chicken, right, Tony? <laughs> yeah. You queef good. like chicken? <laughs> you want me to queef in your face? It smells just like KFC. I, s I smelled it on the microphone. I had, I, had to, I had to follow her closing with a queef. <laughs> she queefed like... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> I could smell all 12 herbs and spices. Yes, season to perfection. Yeah. <laughs> when you hear the meow of a kitty, that means your time's up. Don't run that sound or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Wow. Damn. Damn. He sounds extra angry tonight. That just sounds like the MGM lion being put to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shot in the head. Sleepy tight. So uh, let's get into it. Uh. We have a bunch of comedians that signed up. You guys excited or what? Yeah, I want to see yeah. this. Your first comedian tonight goes by the name of Antonio Houston, a.k.a. Spirit, it says in parentheses. So it's double name. Hello, people. My name's Spirit because I'm, like, really cordial and, like, I had a fucked up life, so I had all these... Uh, I had all these other spirits come inside of me. It's kind of weird. Would you like to meet one? Yeah. He's an old grumpy man. His name's Mad Dog. Here he goes. All right. Um, I'm kind of nervous. Excuse me. Well. <clears throat> hey, how are you guys doing tonight? My name's Mad Dog, and spirit's kind of gay. I'm letting you know. He's a little gay ass. We well, was at a car wash at an interview, right? This guy, the interviewer, Walks up and says, hey, turn around. Let me see uh, if you're sagging. So I'm in the back of Spirit's mind going, don't turn your gay ass around. He just want to seize your ass. Like, come on. This motherfucker turns around and show him his ass. You know what I told him? You might as well drop it like it's hot. Twerk or something. Do a Miley Cyrus on it, motherfucker. You, you're going to get the job. All right, there you go. Antonio Houston, a.k.a. Spirit. Spirit. All right. Now, uh, that was Matter of fact, you can quit on my face. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Performing next week at Fruitvale Station, everybody. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Fruitvale. And when you said you, uh, you had a lot of spirits come inside you. <laughs> Is that how you always say that? Like, is that a part of the thing? Like, yes, are we supposed it's a part to? Of the thing. And why do the spirits sound like McGruff the crime dog? Yeah. <laughs> because they're supposed to. Okay. And that's one. I have a whole different lot of spirits. That's why my name is. Spirit. I'm sure I'm going to be one of them if I say the wrong thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, that, that, that's interesting. How long have you been doing stand up? Well, been on and off for about, I say, three years already. Three years. Mm -hmm. How often do you get on stage? Whenever I can. Like right now, I'm really consistent with it because I'm really trying to take it far. What is consistent? Because when a black man like, say consistent, that might mean once a month. <laughs> 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 Let's keep it every, 100. Every day. I know these things. Every day. Every day. Every day you get yes. on stage. Yes, I go to bars, different bars. The main bar that I go to is in San Fernando Valley. Uh -huh. It's called Petey's. Petey's, that's where you be at? Yes. Who else is in there? Is it just you it's by yourself? Me. I think you he's asking you for a date. Yeah. I'm not going to no damn San Fernando to Petey's. That's probably his cousin's house. <laughs> Petey's just in the back. Petey's in the back with a bar of whiskey yeah. and roof. Which he pours out for all the spirits that he impersonates. <laughs> this is for my spirits, y'all. See you at the crossroads. That's the club I'm opening. <laughs> How many different spirits? Exactly. How, how did you know that? You, you see me there. Hey, yeah. I'm going to miss everybody. I'm going to miss everybody. <laughs> yes. This one's from my Uncle Charles, y'all. I'm Uncle Charles. I like Gucci. I like that's Gucci right there. Yes. That's a Gucci hat. Yes. I like it, but it's blocking your eyes. It, it makes me disconnect. Okay, pull it back down. Never mind. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you should show your eyes when you're on stage. I think that's important as a comic to have uh, eye contact so people can see. 
that what you you believe what you're saying. That you make a connection. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. All right. That's important. When you, when you said you were nervous, was that because you were really nervous? Not really. Yeah, but uh, I, I leave that part he's, out. He's then. lying. Um, I'm a, if you're, <laughs> that if motherfucker you're, was trembling. <laughs> if you're going to cover your face, have a beard. Because Comedy Central will give you a half hour regardless of not if you have one. <laughs> that is so, so true. Yeah, I'm growing totally. my beard right now. Yeah, Down trust low. me. I'm Zach Gallif of Sadness, and they just, you know, <laughs> it works. How, how many, was there any tags or any jokes actually in that, or did you not get to it? Because if it, there was, I didn't think you emphasized the actual parts. No, I really didn't get to emphasize it, but it was actually a joke towards the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like you want to get your first joke in within the first ten seconds, because um, especially all the women in here, we judging if we would fuck you or not, and I can guarantee you, we not fucking. Um, <laughs> but you haven't even yeah. seen my dick size. I'm on I'm on not. I don't even just, care if you about your dick on. size. You didn't catch my brain, so that's that's that. Just think how many times you're going to be texting through the rest of this show, and how quickly people do during every set. And right. You just have to immediately. We have no attention. Right. Spans anymore. Yeah. And, okay. and and if you're going to wear the hat and cover your eyes and you're talking about spirits, come up there with like a little demonic kind of swag and be like, yeah, my name's Spirit. I don't want you to see my eyes because I will suck up your soul. And I'm like, oh, let me open my pussy up. He's sucking out spirits and shit. <laughs> like... I'm I mean, sorry. this is the original. You're performing for the original spirit right here. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Is the right Holy here. Ghost and the Heavenly Father. <laughs> right you know? there. Right. He bombed for your sins, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you he should did. That. Do you always <laughs> chew gum when you're on stage? No. 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 I just was saying. Whichever one of your spirits told you it's good to chew gum on stage, it was wrong. I think it was that he <laughs> smoked too many spirits beforehand <laughs> and just wanted to clean the breath. Is it spearmint? No, it's not spearmint. It's a menthol, that shit is bubble, bubble, bubble yum, juicy fruit. <laughs> menthol gum? Nobody. Yeah, yeah menthol it's watermelon gum. bubble yum because he said he was kind of gay earlier. You heard him. It'd be great if he just went, it's bubblicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Antonio, uh, I say stick with it. It's fun. Heck yeah. Uh, you're taking chances. That's fun. That's different what you did. I don't know if it had, I don't know, you know, hey, rock and roll. Keep rocking it. Exactly. Yeah. He's on Twitter. It's big. Spirit. What, what is that? Spirit, Sp oh, AG. Spirit AG seven 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 on okay. Twitter. Spirit nice. AG, Spirit AG seven seven seven. Like the number of perfection. Hey, remember? <laughs> no, <laughs> Tiffany, remember the simulation I mean, seven theory? Seven chakras, seven days to make the earth right, Jesus. <laughs> In seven <laughs> days you came back. Like well, is seven real, seven like, seven the mark of the yeast? What's yeah. seven yeah. seven seven? <laughs> yeast. The yeast. Oh, yeasty motherfucker! <laughs> Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. Uh, Thank rock you. and roll, man. Hell yeah. Tiffany, remember the simulation theory, Tiffany? We were talking about seven. Oh, yeah, sevens. That's what I'm talking hey, about. Hey, hey, I had just booked a TV show, and they paying me $7,777. I thought of you. No. Yeah, for one that, that hour like of work. Balling, bitch! Damn. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. That's like dropping a name, but like a, like Andrew Jackson name, but whatever's on the $7,000 bill name. For those of you that live uh, that are listening to the podcast or, and are in the San Fernando Valley, go swing by Petey's and check out Antonio Houston, <laughs> aka Spirit, sometime. Uh, find, find the Petey's bar out there if anybody yeah. wants to. Maybe you live in LA and you'd like to spend seventy-seven dollars on gas to go and see him at a place called Petey's. Uh, you could do that. I just imagine it's like a garage and the Sanford and Son theme is playing the whole time. <laughs> Everybody's chewing gum and having a good old time. Who's next? All right. Your next comedian is Jonathan Tumblin. Yeah. What up? Uh, I live with a 31-year-old white man that likes ratchet bitches. Um, I woke up one morning, and he was, like, slaying this girl in his bedroom. And it woke me up, so I was like, I might as well get some water while I'm up. And I go into the living room. It's like an 8-year-old little girl playing Little Big Planet on the TV. Now, I had two decisions to make. I could have just, you know, act like I ain't see her and walk back in my room. But then I heard her mom let out a groan that was just... And then the little girl said, Mommy's crazy. Like, Mama's getting fucked. Um, so, like, she was talking to me or whatever, and I was going to go back in my room or whatever. And I was like, Well, all right, little girl, whoever you are. I pounded her, you know, like, gave her a pound. She was like, What's that? I was like, It's a pound. 
She's like, well, go tell my mom that you pounded me. I was like, don't do that. But then I thought about how many times my roommate cock blocked me. And I was like, yeah, go do it. <laughs> she never came back. They never came back. There you go. Jonathan Tumble. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Right now, Spirit's thinking to himself, that's, what, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's exactly how you do it. Good job. You know he that's swaddled good. his gum right before he got on stage. <laughs> Not making that same mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, dude. That was good. Thanks, Fuck man. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Uh, I got a little confused at one part, and then I guess you brought it back for me. What up? Uh, which was, uh, which was, I didn't know what the fuck, like, I didn't know what was going on with the, uh, with the original thing. Like, I got, I just got lost at who, who you were watching. Uh, the, when you said Little Big Planet. Oh yeah, it's a game on PlayStation. Yeah, Little, maybe make it to yeah. a, a more easier game, like Mario uh, Brothers or something. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, if Unless actually, Sony's paying you, then fucking do it. <laughs> right. Available on PS3 and PS Vita. <laughs> right. The PlayStation comedian. That'd be great. How do, you, how do we pull that off? How do we get a sponsorship? I've done some video games. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Terminator 3, I think, or 2 or some video game. Do you remember what you did? Yeah, I was just like the neighborhood chick that ended up running with the... Um, like the, the the warriors and i'm like the wasp are coming oh my god i'm not going down that hall <laughs> <laughs> that was me wow it's an unlockable character <laughs> <laughs> scott <Scandinavian laughs> be watching us <laughs> yes. ah, shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. that was one of my lines <laughs> God, that would you be must have played the game. That is so cute. Hustle <laughs> fuck this shit. Hustle <laughs> fuck this shit. We better leave. He said he'll be back. <laughs> That's so fun. Mm, I want to go to my grandma's house. Y'all tripping. <laughs> That's in the video game? <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. That is hilarious. Is there, are there any more that you remember? That's, that, these are great. That's less ghetto than what the white people are uh, saying while playing it via headsets. You know? <laughs> She's not being homophobic. For the people who are listening at home, please find uh, videos of Tiffany in this game and uh, tag me in that because I want to see that shit. Yeah, me too. That's hilarious. I know somebody that does uh, uh, did the hooker in the newest Grand Theft Auto game. Really? She just got to that... sit there and just say whatever she wanted. I, I bet you she got paid like a motherfucker. Uh, yeah. I suck your dick for $5, but first, I need you to rub my feet, motherfucker. That's what I would say if I was a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> I've been and then there's a rubbing her. feet mini game that you have to do after. I keep pressing X, but all it's doing is touching the toenails. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, I video love... games are made by Asians, and foot rubbing is perfected by Asians. I, I, we got something here. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Let's get a Vietnamese girl to be like, okay. I rub your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and then I rub your car. <laughs> What Mario it? brother, he got a bigger dick. <laughs> <laughs> he save a princess. I love it. What is Little Big Planet? You were actually playing that? I wasn't playing it. The little girl was like, that's her, I guess, waiting room game while her mom's getting destroyed. It's a fun game. Yeah, you build like build a planet. Build a yeah. whole, like, your own video game. Yep. And, and why was her mom getting destroyed again? Uh, she was having sex with my friend. Oh, with your roommate, right? That's what was going on. You, so you live with a 31 year old white dude? Yeah. Where does he meet these girls on Plenty of Fish? Yep. That's the thing you gotta understand when you say 31 year old white man and an 8 year old girl, everyone looks at me and thinks <laughs> the worst. So. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty sad, man. Like you bring your daughter on your sex dates. At least yeah. you're not leaving her at home alone. That's even worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At but least she's have... hearing the sounds of love. You have no idea who it, that man lives with. Seems she, like that she, she knows what she's she... going to be doing in three years. You know? <laughs> and I think and, and like... she, now she knows what it sounds like when doves cry. <laughs> 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 you know, the, fuck, the fucked up thing is, though, she looked at me like I was out of place. Like She was like, whoa, what up, man? Like Playing the game and everything. Right? It's, yeah. It seems like that's two jokes, like almost two premises, though, because it seems like yeah. the, the, the hand-pounding thing, that should... That should be somewhere completely else than oh, you, yeah, like, hanging out with this little girl while her mom's getting pounded. It almost, yeah. It just she needs like to come back with her sister, who's, like, 20, <laughs> with no titties, no. and then just go from there. Yeah. <laughs> There's almost and something like, in the fact that the, that the mom 
met the guy on Plenty of Fish while the little girl's on like playing Endless Ocean or something. <laughs> I know, like that. Right? Twenty with She's no, no, Little Mermaid. Twenty with no titty sounds like like a coming of age novel that I want to read. So, yeah, well, from that's the, the story of, of my of being... fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty no titties, please fuck me. Jennifer Lawrence is twenty with no titties. <laughs> Jonathan. The world is flat. <laughs> <laughs> you got to write this. <laughs> That's great. It's in development. <laughs> Jonathan, that was great, man. Keep thank rocking. You, thank you, thank you. Good Jonathan job. Jonathan Tumblin, everybody. He's J Sherlock T on Twitter, at J Sherlock T. They really, they are realizing how the industry works because they do a set, then we just talk to each other, forget they exist, <laughs> yeah. and then five minutes later go, oh, you can go home now. <laughs> that is, yeah, there's nothing to win. Hollywood. Yeah. There's nothing to get. Patriot, how you doing over there? Yep, I think you guys covered that pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I think he okay. fell asleep. I think that was just him just like waking up. Have, have you, can you fall asleep standing up? Have you? Uh, yeah. no? Sometimes I dream. It's just weird that the microphone's at his dick, so you just think the dick is talking the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I got a speaker in the chest mic, and uh, that's where the sound's coming out this way, and we found this is the best position for it. Okay. I knew there was a logical that's what answer. She said. <laughs> the Patriot's a professional background extra, and he's in the background of most major TV shows and a ton of movies. Wow. I probably worked with him. You know, I used to be a background actress back in the day, in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. I was actually the very first African-American woman ever to appear on the Hannah Montana show as an extra walking around in the back. I showed up the first day on time. Wow. And you know what's funny? You Jeff, say first you. like there was a last. I think only. Yeah. It's probably better. I know for, <laughs> shut, I know. Up. shut up. There was like two other black girls. I know for a fact. <laughs> Billy Patriot, Ray likes them. I was the first. <laughs> I, I know for a fact, Tiffany, that Patriot has worked on Hannah Montana. Yes, I was on one of the last episodes in 2009. So you, wow. you were at the, we were bookends. You were at the beginning. I was at the end. Yeah. Yeah. You want to fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Get it on. I just, I just want this show to end with us taking the mask off, and it's a skeleton. He's been <laughs> dead the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like uh, Jeff Peterson on Craig Ferguson. Oh, that's so funny. Man, we uh, don't even know what the fuck you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's yeah. He's got I, a robot on his show. If you watch his show, you'll see he's got a robot. Oh, he has a robot? Oh, okay. It's a skeleton. It's a robot skeleton. Oh, okay. You All got right. a patriot. But you're not a skeleton, no, right? No, I'm the real deal. Do you vibrate? Yes, I do all kinds okay. of things, Tiffany. Can you vibrate right now? Oh. He has a foot fetish. You have Bring any... that pouch over here. I'll, I'll put some vibration on it. My pouch? Motherfucker, I ain't no goddamn kangaroo. This is a <laughs> 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 She's a visiting Epcot Center. That ain't no fanny pack. Now, if you want to go down under, no, who's the next comedian? She goes by the name of Chelsea Grove. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, come on. Implying it is one thing, playing it is another. <laughs> we are not Petey's. <laughs> Um, so, um, you guys can give it up for me. I've been in LA 18 months and I've lost 40 pounds since I've been out here. Thank you. Thank you. Started a new diet. Uh, it's called the struggle. So, uh, it's happening. Um, I actually talked to my mom the other day and, um, I was like, mom, I'm really looking forward to having kids. Um, and she was like, well, just make sure you're sure because I'm not raising no more children. I'm like, mom, you're not going to help take care of your grandkids? She's like, no, I wasn't in the bedroom enjoying that orgasm. That was all you. You was the one talking about, ooh, daddy is yours. Ooh, daddy is yours. And I was like, okay, well, mom, what if I have to go out of town or travel? She was like, listen, every time you look at that child and you think you want to give it over to me, just remember, that is what a good nut looks like, okay? Because that's all children are. They're just good nuts, good climaxes. Okay. Well, if you're having a, a bad day or a bad set like this, uh, just remember, just uh, take a pregnancy test. Because when it comes back negative, uh, your uh, day's going to look a whole lot brighter. So that's it for me. <laughs> Chelsea. Uh -huh. What was the punchline on the first thing? You're on a diet called. Oh, um, the diet called the struggle. Like, cause that's uh, why I lost struggle. weight when I moved out here. I thought you said strolling. Oh, yeah. I thought I was talking fast. I think you Sorry. should go, cause I've been on a diet. It's called pause, but just take a pause and go. The struggle. Right. Like you oh, know, okay. emphasize struggle. Okay. Yeah, okay. That would kill. 
Okay. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. got to be crystal clear. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I really, I, I was thinking, and then you're in your, the beginning of your next joke, and I'm still trying to think of what exactly I was like, oh. stroking off. Do you that. normally talk that fast? Is that your normal set? Yeah, no, I, it's something I have to work on. I normally talk fast just in general, so, but I know on stage I obviously have to not talk so fast, so I'm, you know. And just I, know that never say that you're bombing. Yeah. That's our privilege. That's yeah. our right. But no, I mean, I'm joking. But like, yeah. don't because you can lose a crowd for nine minutes in a ten minute set and mm-hmm. still win them. But the second that you tell them you're done, they realize it. So just you know, if the first joke doesn't go well, that's fine. Yeah. Maybe we're the assholes, you know, and you'll prove us wrong with the next one. Okay. So just you know, believe in yourself. Always, okay. always have confidence and okay. believe in yourself. That's important. And. uh Damn, I forgot what that. That regularly taking pregnancy test thing sounds like a great premise. I yeah. think what you have it right now is a premise. Yeah, yeah. And a great one. Like I can't figure out why that would be. Just, I mean, like it's. I don't know. I just figure if you take a pregnancy test and it's negative, I mean, at least that's one thing you have to worry about. You know, just. But you could talk about like negative. Yeah. Is a positive like. Right. Oh, exactly. I see what you're saying. You okay. know, just some kind of play on words or right. just something. It just was the the joke wasn't clear. I just okay. love your energy. Your oh. energy is on point. That's thank like you. what I feed off of when oh, I'm at a show. Because I come to comedy shows. That when I do come to a show, I come to have a good time. Mm-hmm. And I want the comedian on stage to be having a good time. And it seems like you were having fun. So to me, that's really important. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. You. Mm-hmm. And what was the middle one about? There was the second one. Oh, um, just my mom. You know, I was talking to her about having grandkids or me having kids. And she said, you know, well... Don't ever try to bring them over to my house, you know, because right. I'm not raising any more kids. And I was like, well, you know why? And she said, well, no, that's you enjoyed that nut, so you enjoy the consequences, which is that child. Oh, I got you. So that yeah. that's you know. And that children are beautiful orgasms. Yeah. Which, that's not true. I've been pregnant a couple of times and I did not come. <laughs> right now. And I had to go to Six Flags and get rid of that shit because it was like, I'm going to look at you and be like, you wasn't even worth it. Oh my God, I don't even know his name. Well, that's why they call it the Great Adventure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay. Chelsea, you rock. Yeah, you're thank good. You. You're going to make you. it. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. She's on Twitter at See the Funny. G? Did only black people sign up? I feel yeah. really good today. I have a feeling in five years we're going to be playing Terminator and hearing her voice. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Take a pregnancy test. The, the wasp are coming. Do you guys remember, uh, do you guys have any bit that you remember having? Like That's a great way to very... abort someone. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> 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 it it wasn't that. a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> Those should be posters for Planned Parenthood. <laughs> it's not twins. <laughs> Which is uh. funny, too, because I am the spokesperson for Planned Parenthood in Oklahoma City. They got a bus with my face on it and everything. Are you serious? Yes. Once you go there enough times, they, you know, make you a spokesperson. <laughs> You earn that shit. That's how you pay them back. You know, Tiffany, something else that impressed me about you is you do some work with the inner city youth. Yeah. And and it's a program called Chuckles, Not Knuckles. Chuckles instead of Knuckles. No, Chuckles, Not Knuckles. You were right the first time. Okay, okay. But um, that's very admirable that you do something like that. Yeah, I feel, Whenever I, I imagine him looking up information <laughs> about us, I just imagine him in the suit. Yeah, like he's, he's not looking at it. Like, or, or going to like an internet cafe. Like, yeah. how much can I get yeah. for $5, please? I'm in, I'm in my suit when I'm doing research. I'm, I'm walking around my apartment. I'm, I'm ironing. I'm vacuuming. I'm doing my dishes. What kind he of sounds suit? like Baby Stuart suit? Smalley. I'm smart yeah. enough. I'm metallic yeah. enough. And gosh darn it, people like me. Yeah. <laughs> it's 40 pounds of fiberglass here. The midsection is ABS plastic. Mm, that sounds like you're going to have testicle cancer or something. I love his strategy. The meaner you are to me, the more factual I will respond. <laughs> you will die of pancreatic cancer at the age of 45. And your fiance will have left you three years before realizing what a terrible person Mike, you Mike, are. You got to realize Tony told me to be nice to the guest. I was pretty mean. I beat up on Jeff Ross last week. He didn't like it. Yeah, and Bobby. You just kept bashing them. Well, I did it in a clever way. I no, know. you didn't. Or yes, else I, did. I wouldn't have told you that you have to pre approve no. your questions with me. No, no. no which no. I didn't really do today. I took your word and you did a good job. So thank yeah, you. He's doing a great job. He's gonna be the Iron awesome. Patriot, yeah. everybody. I'm yeah. totally going to let you vibrate on me. He comes oh, yeah. at. 
came at Jeff Ross and Bobby extremely hard last week. You, you, sometimes you get a little out of line. You have a couple good weeks in a row. Well, you get I've a little... had a lot of the guests come at me pretty hard. It's so man I wanted period to be shit, Tony. We, what's that? It's man period shit. Oh, yeah, Every guy is... goes through it. We just don't recognize yeah, we it. We have to stop bullying is what he's trying to say. Yeah. He's been kind of fucking a suit of armor, this super, guy. And this is a part of Chuckles, Not Knuckles. You know, we, we teach kids how not to bully each other. And if they do bully, laugh at their ass. But Iron Patriot wasn't a superhero. He was a villain pretending yeah. to be a superhero to fool the world yeah. and uh, act out his evil plan, as Whoa. was displayed in Dark Adventures, The List. And then Peter Parker defeated him when he found the disc that had all of Norman's oh. names on it. So yeah. he was never a hero. Yeah. He was always a bad guy. Yeah, he, he was just, he just pretending. Blew Tony's head. Wow, you jacked off that. And it makes thing. sense. Yeah, he tricked America into thinking he was patriotic. Yeah, just, yeah. so he wasn't a hero. He was villain. Yeah, well, I mean, most people don't know that story. That's why I just said that. But yeah, you, you're on the same wavelength as me, Mike. we got to get together later. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to get assassinated. That wavelength <laughs> is just a hand masturbating <laughs> itself. <laughs> I can just Hilarious. see Mike right now clearing the schedule for the rest of his week so that he can hang out with you and talk about comic books. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Who's next? We just ride the city bus together and nobody <laughs> judges us. <laughs> yeah. They treat you like people on here. I love it. He can only he rides the bus here, by the way. Did we, oh, yeah. Oh, Do you I, know about I, this? I'm aware. Oh, he wow. can't sit down. Did you know that? You yeah. have to stand on the bus? Yeah, yeah. I bet you'd be freaking out the crackheads. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Or giving them hope. It's one or the other. Or giving yeah. them Pippen, crack. You're going home on the bus with me tonight. I'm going to take you home and, and show you No, stuff. you can ride in my little car. I got a Corvette. You can see it. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't have a Corvette. It's a convertible. I got rid of the Corvette. Mm. Now I have a Volkswagen. Oh, I love that chocolate mousse. That chocolate moosey? <laughs> oh my god. Wow. This is his way of saying pussy without saying pussy. I love that chocolate moosey. <laughs> is that what it you is said? A You're an animal tonight, Patriot. <laughs> I think Iron Patriot's from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Texas. Yeah. Dallas. In fact, we performed at the same club that you did at the Curtain Club. And yes, was, I was uh, hoping you'd talk to the owner because that Doug Simmons used to book Dirty Crabber back in the day. And that was the street where the Dirty Crabber Mailman video was done. Okay. So, did you like it? Did you like that area? Down yeah, it was great. It's it was cool. Great. Okay, everybody. Your next comedian's name is Timothy Cash. It's Timothy Cash. There he is. All right. Got to kill a whole minute. Maybe girls want to have sex twice. And I'll tell a joke. Actually, I've accepted the fact that I'm probably going to be single the rest of my life. Not by choice, but because every woman I meet says the same thing. They all say, I'm tired of playing games. I don't want to play any more games. I need a man that doesn't play games. And that sucks, because I love me some Yahtzee. <laughs> this comedy thing don't work out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I already tried my other dream job. I want to be a fireman. Give it a shot. You know that saying they say, fight fire with fire? Don't. Don't ever do that. A flamethrower will not put out a fire. In fact, it makes it significantly worse. Two cats walk into the bar. Bartender says, Are you asking for the cat? Uh, all right. I timed that everything. <laughs> that, time that was pretty, well, pretty good. Huh? You had the machines have failed you. <laughs> but you were excellent. That was good, man. It would have been great if he had done the cat noise right when I said that. Yeah. But, it, but it's not up to that. It's on a timing thing. So. Is the winger shirt unironic or ironic? Fucking sweet. <laughs> Found this at a thrift store for two bucks. That did not answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> that just further complicated it and gave me nine more questions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, don't fight fire with fire. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. And, uh, it was, was good the, joke structure. Very yeah. good. Yeah, good it's writing. It's tough with a minute. I'm usually like a two to four minute, like talker. Sex. Is, <laughs> is, is, it all, is it all non sequiturs? No. What, what is that Actually, word, I mean, that's, that's Yeah, I, I'm on with Tiffany. You know, just like quick, like one liners that aren't connected at all. No, that's oh, just... oh, like Frazier. <laughs> Frazier Smith. Come on, folks. These are the jokes. <laughs> that's how they connect yeah. them all. Yeah. But you don't need to yeah, do that. Yeah, I don't that. really do segues for my 1A's. I just... Yeah, just do them. 
be pretty awesome. The fire with fire, it seems like you could go deeper in that. Like, you know, they're like, there was a car fire, so then I did this. You know, there was this. That's, it actually, that's it's, actually long, it's actually a little bit longer bit oh, okay. condensed. Okay, cool. I would tag the Yahtzee thing. I would shorten in the front a little mm -hmm. bit any way you can and then tag it. Like, I don't know, just like, because I, I just feel like you talk, if you actually like Yahtzee, like you talking about, like, nothing like the feeling of watching five die roll out of that little canister, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know, just get into it. Actually, I'm surprised you, that actually is my only thing about Yahtzee because I really love Yahtzee. Right. And, and what's like the, the objective is to roll, like, five fives in that or something, right? Well, you it? actually got to get, like, a whole list of this stuff. But, I mean, Yahtzee is like the, the – What's Yahtzee? That's the Grand Slam. That's five of the same thing. What games do you play when you go to Vegas? Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> he finds it. He I'm finds the Yahtzee slot machine. War. <laughs> it's just him and an old Japanese man who puts a million dollars down. He puts down three dollars. <laughs> that's just how it goes sometimes, bro. <laughs> Yahtzee. Yeah. Yahtzee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's the thing. Yeah, it's like the the chain and, and the wing. I mean, it just you look like everybody who's ever sold Slipknot tickets outside a concert. Oh, boo. <laughs> yeah. But oh, but man. I just I don't know no. what your is this what you're going for? Like the uh, winger, the wing. I mean, yeah. when you first winger is a up. horrible band. <laughs> But yeah, when he I first know, walked I mean, up, I thought I that seventy show. When I first saw him, like, oh, that's the guy from that seventy yeah. show. No, I just, I don't like winger. I just like thought of the sweet ass shirt. Okay. Do you smoke weed? Yeah. Yeah, you look like you got some good ass weed. <laughs> like you grow that shit. And the chain, honestly, I've had the chain since I was like uh, probably 12 years old because I used to lose like two wallets a year. My dad would always make fun of me. We'd like go on road trips and stop at truck stops and he'd always point at the truck wallets and be like, I'm going to get you one of those. I'd be like, shut up, dad. So what's the excuse for the janitor chain on the other side of, of keys that you have? Because you know you only need usually one or two keys. And the stormtrooper thing. <laughs> yes. This is the thing. As a comic, as a comic, you should want to be Darth Vader, not a stormtrooper. <laughs> yes. Have a fucking ego. Do not yeah. be one of the dudes who just get shot once. Be the fucking star. <laughs> yeah. Don't think like a stormtrooper, man. You might as well yeah. be a fucking Ewok, man. Be Darth Vader. <laughs> Be Boba so Fett. True. Have some amazing lines, but we still kind of forget you, but think you were cool. Like, just be, but don't be a stormtrooper, you man. Wanna, you want to be able to stand I'm so out, I'm so you know? And the, look, at, look at Iron Page. He's not dressed as one of the henchmen from the 1966 <laughs> Batman. He's not a dude in a shirt that just says Bob number one. That, he's a fucking villain yeah. who tricked people into being thinking he was a like superhero. A minute ago, he was talking about how he, he irons wearing that. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Nobody really got that. Thanks. Wow. Well. No, because it wasn't that funny. Any, any. Iron Man. Well, thank you for mentioning that. I got, I got, I got, I got <laughs> that it. Was By funny. the way, Patriot, hey, you didn't even realize that you said it and it was funny. So, But that would make you the ironing Patriot. <laughs> the ironing Patriot. <laughs> if you did it in that suit. Oh, he Tony does the iron flags all day. What's that? Tony Starch. When I <laughs> Tony oh, Starch. nice. Yes. Wow, look at you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. By osmosis, it's rubbing off on me by osmosis being around you guys. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. It's about time you say something funny. It's been 33 weeks. Uh, <laughs> I love that the girls pretended to get that joke. Oh, Tony Stark. <laughs> Here's my headshot. Uh, <laughs> How the fuck did you? That's really funny, Patriots. I love about L.A. If they won't wow. laugh, they'll fake laugh. It's awesome. Yeah, I can tell how excited he is right now. Normally, he doesn't make this hard of eye contact with me. Like, he's just looking at me, being proud of him. He's, yeah. I'm on my way now, telling me. Oh my uh, god! Then he ruins it by being creepy. What would be great is if every week he tries to make that Tony Starch joke, but there's no context <laughs> right. for it. He's like, "What the fuck?" It's yeah. like the y'all ready for this guy? Like, <laughs> I had my moment and it's gone. Timothy Cash, fuck yeah! I would acknowledge yeah. something about uh, I don't know the way you look more. I mean, I'm sure you do that. I'm just saying. There's, I don't know. You're but, great. I think I'm gonna get rid of the beard next week. Oh, Don't shit. Don't fucking do that, man. Don't well, you fucking... I, I, you inspired me with uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> Guaranteed 30 minutes. Bro. Yeah, man. Uh, fucking... My this... beard grows like... This will be back in like a month, though. Uh, like, it'll like, be back in two days if you I let eat, me sit Every on time it. I eat anything... Like, see, I got a mustache. You got your mustache trimmed. Every time I eat anything, I have to take a comb out and 
put all my mustache. Dude, I eat ice cream in a hotel by myself <laughs> because I don't want anyone to see it. It's I like have to put a, I have to tuck a napkin in. Like you usually see that just like in movies and TV shows. People don't really do that. You're like, I have to do that. Dude, you're I eat I, I, I eat food like I'm the elephant man. I'm like, <laughs> don't look at me. It's fucking just do be you, man. You fucking look. You look like you could pull out a pan flute at any time <laughs> and amaze us with a Jethro Tull solo. Yeah. So fucking be you, man. There you go, Fair Timothy Fair Cash. Enough. Thank you, man. I always love about Timothy is that uh, a lot of a lot of comedians are on Twitter and uh, in where a lot of them put their Twitter handle. Timothy Cash just puts "fuck no." <laughs> Get on Twitter. I don't do that shit. Twitter is that a part of the vagina? <laughs> <laughs> that Twitter. I've thing. touched a few Twitters in my day. <laughs> in my van. Hell, man. Fuck that Twitter. Don't even have its own TV show. Yeah. Your hands together for Calvin Loxony. Yeah. Hello, Calvin Loxony. Calvin Loxony. Uh oh, you, you know, know what, what that, that means? means. <laughs> he just got blacklisted. Yikes! Sucks to be him. R.I.P. Calvin Loxley. Your next comedian goes by the name of Eric Vasquez. He's the best. He's a champion. He's the most tip top. Ladies and gentlemen. He is now walking down the stairs. Sometimes it takes a comedian one minute to get to the stage. Am I right, people? <laughs> Eric Vasquez. Hello, guys. Thank you for having me. Um, I just turned 25, actually, guys. A couple months ago. 25. <sighs> it's a little, it forced me a little self-examination, you know? Uh, one thing you got to understand about me is I'm kind of the guy... Physically, if someone were to see me naked and I didn't have a bush, it look fucking weird. It look weird like those like bald cats look weird. Have you ever went into those bald cats and tried to pet one of those? And you look at it and you pet it and you're like, Ugh. yeah, that's how you, I would look without any hair down there. It's actually good to rock a bush sometimes, like I said, because if a woman were to see me naked, she would think two, she would think two things. One, that's a shitload of hair. And two, there has to be more penis behind that hair. There isn't. There isn't. But she thinks there is. Battle half one. Oh, damn. There you go. Right on time. Eric Vasquez. Uh, uh, first, uh, Bush is female, right? And also no. the greatest president of all time. No, um, but Bush, <laughs> I've never so heard Bush. Has anyone ever heard Bush used in a male context? I've oh, never. Depends who I'm talking to. Only the, to only the snake think? is hiding no. in the bush. I've heard that. Well, and I'm like, let me what go if you grew out? up with transsexuals and was like, what is this world you speak of where <laughs> men don't have bushes? I've never. I, I, it was what do you throwing call me it? off the whole time. Like, why would you have a bush unless. What do you mean? Everybody has natural pubic hair. <laughs> well, we don't call it bushes. What well, do you call okay, it? Okay, well, help me out. What should I call it? Then? Pubes. Oh, or yeah. Pubic hair. Like lots of pubes? Because if I have a bush, it, 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 it says that I have a lot of hair. It says you have a pussy. Yeah. All right. Period. Uh, right, Bush. I right. think you got okay. a pussy. That's okay. what I was thinking. Like, he might have a pussy. He I got titties. I mean, I no, do I not. As, as the only Bush supporter in the room, uh, <laughs> the, the Bush Bush is female, right? I've just never heard that before. I say it as a joke, you know, like like hey, you like how my bush is trimmed, you know, as a joke, not like being serious, you know. Yeah, but I it think just, I, have I, I don't think it added. I think, yeah. I think it was a Sounds distraction. Sounds like pussy to me. So pubes. <laughs> is that what Pubes, is something, something yeah. different. Yeah. Tiny, Man what hair. Tiny, what do you uh, well, how's the premise? You think grass. You know, I don't really remember what yeah, I, I call either. it exactly. I don't Coconut know really fur. <laughs> coconut <laughs> fur. I do you like, you like the premise? You think it could I be like, funnier? I, like I, I, I think fur. it could be if you just get into it. If you I start telling a... us what it's like instead of trying to make us picture it, because then it gets gross. So you're sort of like half describing it, and then all of a sudden we're looking at you, and it's just bad. So if instead of giving us too much time to think about it, start throwing out things of what it does look like. like I think it was if you're a, saying that you yeah. have a tiny penis and lots of hair, then get into it. It's like a fucking... It sounds like a clitoris hiding. It's an, exa it's an exaggeration. You took, you took a 30-minute drive to the I have a small dick store that's two <laughs> minutes away. Yeah. Like, it was just basically uh, I have a I small see, dick, and it was just an overcomplicated way of doing a very basic 
And that might even be it. It might even just go, you know, like however you would say it. But, you know, like I would say to come right out with I have a small dick. That's funny. Or or mix it with your other joke. Worse than we're even worse than that. I have a lot of pubes. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> or just then, yeah, like, then you're already in, and then you can give examples on why and how, and, and then maybe you can even talk about how you have a, you know that gut that probably makes things more complicated. Yeah. Just so, say yeah. that these are you don't need pubes when you have a gut because that's already covering everything. Right. You, know, yeah. you don't oh, yeah. need two yeah. curtains, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see exactly. Jesus's face there though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus' face was like on scary <laughs> mode. Like I died for this. <laughs> I was sinning right now, right in front of Jesus. So. <laughs> Yeah. Disgusting. I like the cat comparison when you know yeah. at the beginning because that is you would like the cat comparison. Very good visuals. Yeah, my friend has one of those cats, so it's. I don't know the kind of cat. What is it again? The one that Dana. You know, I really don't know. There's oh, a lot of like, hairless cats. Yeah, oh, like, the one that weird. The that Denzel Washington killed in the uh, the Isaiah movie, uh, Elijah, or the book of Isaiah, book of Eli, Elijah. Eli. Book, yeah, you know who I'm you talking about. You the one specific Denzel movie where he was intense and growling all the time, that that one. <laughs> yeah, when he was blind and stuff, but you didn't know it until near the end. Anyway, uh, did you see Book of Eli? <laughs> Eric, um, fuck yeah. I would talk about the, the – I, I would just come out with each line and then start giving – I would start talking about it, you know, instead of painting a long picture and hey, all that. You know, you know how Tiffany said that the girls in the first ten seconds, they decide if they're going to fuck you? I don't think you should talk about a small dick. That, that's a bad recommendation because they're right away going to say no way. Yeah, how do you get a girl to even see your dick? Or well, see, see, if they were bush. to see my penis, they would be pleasantly surprised. I got to like, you know, oh, not, oh. not build it up as much because if, they, if I do talk about it, and then people say, like, oh, he has a small dick, and the girl does actually try to lame me. You know, it, it, she'll be playing this surprise because it's not small. I just fuck talk they shit. They do is oh, okay. that. I just talk shit, you know. I'm not, it's not small. It's ladies and gentlemen. Because we believe that shit. It's too late now. You, we, you obviously have a tiny dick. <laughs> I mean, there's no going back now. Once you compare it to the size dick of your dick. actually looks like Tattoo from Fantasy Islands. <laughs> Since I've edged the plane, the plane. <laughs> but my, my, my thing is, if I could give you a piece of advice, it's when you do self-deprecation, you have to sell the shit out of it and own it. When you talk about how ugly you are, how fat you are, or how bad of a lay you are, you have to say that shit as if it is the curse that you have lived with for years. And, I mean, the more hard you are on yourself... And the schlubbier you are, the more confident you have to be. Because if you Mm -hmm. combine sad delivery and sad material, people are like, I can't watch this because I feel like Sarah McLaughlin should be holding you. (laughs) Yeah, nobody. (laughs) Hey, Mike, Mike. Uh, Especially because you have the penis of a two-month-old puppy. It's hilarious because I've actually said that like in front of a in in front of a crowd, and I've actually got like a aw. Yeah, because nobody comes to a comedy show to feel sorry for you. We don't. We just want to fucking have fun. I need to make it funnier. So be confident in your little dick. For you know just I, mean? like, I got little ten. titties. I'm like, yeah, I got a 31 a minus, but somebody gonna suck on these nipples. <laughs> <laughs> For just ten cents a day, you can I see Eric you. Vasquez's bush <laughs> in the arms of an angel. <laughs> it's in a cage sometimes. Is key, man. Are you kind of talking about like Joan Rivers? You know the way she's confident, but she puts herself down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you that. just it, you have to like you have to own your own sadness. Yeah, you know. Because it's got to be fun. That's the key to comedy is have fun. People do not come to be sad or feel sorry for your ass. They come to have fun. Mm-hmm. Was your, So have fun. Were, were you on it a week ago or two? No, no. It's the first time. I've been this here for a couple months, and it's actually my first time up. But you've been doing comedy other places, right? Or uh, Not mostly around here. Sometimes around here. I've only been doing comedy for two months. so Awesome. So. Well, there you uh, go. You, you well, get up every day, man, and I'm go. Trying, man. I'm trying, brother. I'm trying. Fucking PD's is open. You can go there. <laughs> <laughs> Just wherever, wherever yeah. you need to. Stage signs available. Yeah, yeah but I mean, that that even though we were making fun of that, I mean, seriously, if he's getting up every day and Hell he yeah. found a place, fucking, that's great. Totally. So, do just, it. Yeah, find, totally find a out. place. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you, guys. It's Eric Vasquez. He's on Eric with a K. Eric V Comedy on Twitter. At Eric with a K V Comedy. Work it, work it, work it. Vasquez. For the second, after the first few people, I'm like, is it all black people? That are gonna get it's on? a minority show tonight. Bit, it was, it was interesting. But we did get like the whitest. We got like the yeah. face of gentrification. Yeah. So we did get that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> One black person had to give up their spot so that guy could go up. Yeah. Totally. 
Fuck yeah. Did you, do you guys have a, uh, a bit that you did when you first started out that... Uh, I already asked that. Did I really? Yeah. Did we talk about this? What's this? I don't remember talking about it. He said I, something I didn't say. I don't know. I don't remember this. Did you have a bit when you started out doing comedy that uh, you uh, are embarrassed that you did? That, like when you very first started that was like bad and you remember it being bad? Did I ask you guys this? I swear no. to God you did. I, I thought that no. I may have when I started. But I think we, it was like Tiffany only answered it and... I don't no, think I so. didn't answer that. That was right Jesus. on the line. So you yeah. freaked me out when I, because I'm like, <laughs> fuck, did I really? But it's just because we're we were stoned. thinking about it yeah. before the last one. That's how we're fucking monsters. Yeah. Our chemist, we've, we've been spending way too much time <laughs> together. <laughs> we're, we're both wondering, did I ask that already? Right. Anyway. No, you didn't. I was do you want to answer? It. Yeah, totally. You want to go first? Um, my first bit, I remember it was probably whack and maybe I might have bit it off of somebody. I don't know, but I was, Cause we were poor and I was like, yeah, we were so poor. We had two TVs. You know how everybody have two TVs, but our TVs were in the living room stacked on top of each other. And one was for picture and one was for sound. And if my light skinned sister held the antenna just right, we would get color. <laughs> that was my joke. It was so whack. That's pretty What funny. do you mean that's a whack? That's fucking awesome. Yeah, I've Am always I been right? awesome that's ever right. since I was 16. But fuck this shit. I'm what the best. Is. I'm the Beyonce of this shit. But what's this? What's I that? I just need somebody famous to pass. What's that antenna You mean your dad you booked your gigs for you? <laughs> no, I didn't know and my fired dad. fired all the other comics on the show? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which Beyonce are we talking about? You have fucking... a mediocre sister that's trying to do comedy? I, no, no. None of my... No, my sisters aren't mediocre. They're some bad bitches. I guess maybe... Maybe I'm the Nicki Minaj. Maybe fuck that. I'm the Kim Kardashian. No, I don't. I didn't do it. No. Sex no, I don't know. I'm just a bad bitch of comedy. You're the fuck Tiffany that. Haddish of comedy. Yeah, You're fucking. Yeah, I'm great. the Tiffany Haddish of comedy, and I've always been good. <laughs> and I'm the Tiffany Haddish of slam poetry. So. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? <laughs> what if we all just sit up? I'm <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. No, I'm <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. And I'll be like, I told you I was white. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please book me for video games. I need this. Um, what was your experience? Oh, my God. Uh, three weeks in, because uh, I did do slam poetry for seven years while working at McDonald's. <laughs> I know it's weird. I'm judging people. Um, but I did, and then I started comedy. My third week of comedy, I got my first book gig. This was in Florida, and it was at a lesbian bar. And I had, I literally just had seven minutes of material, and my closer was about a breast cancer and it was a joke about how how awesome it would be if there was a breast cancer porno and one of the lines with it was what should i take off first my hair or my top uh another line it was and i did it was a That's whole trailer funny. thing it was like and pat marita as dr kimo sabi um and he had died the week before so i just went in memoriam um that's hilarious but, but the 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 whole the whole thing was like the worst, and someone threw a beer bottle at me while I was doing it. Um, I don't, I don't remember some angry man with his lesbian girlfriend. Um, no. <laughs> lady some, dude. some. I, I, I don't, I don't exactly remember what the lesbian who threw the beer bottle at me looked like, but I think it was like one of those bricks that falls on you in Mario Brothers with the face, the swamps. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I, but you know what? That was the greatest moment. Uh, that was the moment I knew I'd be doing comedy forever because I'd spent so many years just wanting attention, and I finally got it mm -hmm. at a lesbian yeah. bar and yeah. and you know and it was great was i stayed the, this is another one of my t five you know uh pieces of advice to pass on to comics i stayed the rest of the night i went second the worst bomb you could possibly have i watched every other comic and saw what worked and i mean so many comics now are entitled and you know shitty and arrogant and i mean we always have been but like people will bomb mm -hmm. after their second week of doing comedy and leave right afterwards. Stick around, watch. Someone will always have a good set, even totally. on the worst night. Yeah. And you kind of, if you can't, like, once you're not a good comic on a show, be a good audience member. Be something yeah. <laughs> right. in your first few years. I think that's important. It's yeah. important to watch comedy because you'll learn so much about timing and presence and, yeah. and a good way to perform and a bad way to perform. And, and even, to... even if you see something kill that you despise, mm -hmm. then learn about what you don't want to do exactly. as a yes. comic. Yeah, it was crazy when I got the job here in uh, 2007. 
and I worked here for three or four years at the door. And uh, I would watch, you know, you're getting paid basically to hang out and get to watch a show from the back of the room. You're seating the room. You're making sure, sometimes I was just making sure that people were 21 and that nobody was heckling. And you get to see 16 paid regulars do, you know, 15 minutes a night. And they're all sort of, you know, competing and fucking, I mean, it's not a competition, but everybody wants to be the one that they remember the most. Mm -hmm. so and and all new that. comics have is each other. I hope that, like, right. yeah. I hope that like two of the comics we talked to tonight like go up to each other and meet each other and introduce each other. Right. And, you know. Yeah. There's no better feeling on in this show than uh, having somebody come up to me a few weeks later and be like, "Hey, that thing, that one thing," and I won't remember it first. And then I'm like, "Oh shit!" And then you know, but uh, when they get stuff working and it all comes together, remember the more awesome. helpful we are, the less funny we are. So. Yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> you're gonna learn today. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna learn today. All right. Fuck. You guys both have funny uh, first bits. Yeah. The TV on the TV and the, the breast cancer. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say they had to uh, scissor away some tissue. <laughs> oh, that would have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Castillo, everybody. Frank. It really is like a gentrification. We started black and then we went white and now we're at all Hispanic. It's the fool. I yes. love knowing whatever songs I reference they'll play. <laughs> I have some kind of power. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. Uh, I was uh, walking into work. I saw a homeless guy outside, and uh, he, he looked at me, and he locked eyes, and he said, uh, hey, sir, uh, can you spare some change, uh, or are you going to be a piece of shit? <laughs> and it was weird, because I'd already had my hand in my pocket. Like, I clenched the change. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a good guy today. And then he was like, are you going to be a piece of shit? And I was like, yeah, nope. Stop caring. And I said it, and I was like, you know what? I think I am going to be a piece of shit. And he just stared at me. He was like, oh, fuck you. And I was like, you know what? You have a good day, sir. I felt like it really helped him. Like, maybe if his approach was, like, a little bit better, you know, like, you know, maybe he was, like, nicer about it, I probably would have, you know, gave him the change. That was more factual than anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I realized that as I said it. So that's actually just what happened. <laughs> Latino David Cross, everybody. <laughs> there he is. Oh. That's, that's the minute. Um, fuck yeah, yeah. It's interesting where you know when, you, when that's immediately what I thought. The moment that it started getting factuals when you said that you're staring at him or he's staring at yeah. you, like the fact that you're still there. I just wouldn't believe. <laughs> now, that. now you're the weirdo out of the guy that's asking the stranger for change. I just wouldn't believe that the homeless guy is at another open mic right now somewhere <laughs> telling his side of the story. Yeah. And this motherfucker was like, like <laughs> and he was writing down notes as this exchange was happening. <laughs> I saw his wallet sticking out. He really needs a chain for it. You know. <laughs> a chain for a club bag. <laughs> Hilarious. But you're funny as fuck. I, I've never seen you do comedy before, but I'm so excited to come, go see you. Do you do a lot of? Uh, are you from the East Coast? Do you live here? Or uh, I'm trying to move here, but yeah, I live in New York. Oh wow, you're great. It's oh, so thanks. weird. The, the East Coast, like I finally that... got the approval my parents never gave me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I found you. Did I talk about this at the dark comedy? That's how you fest? know I look homeless when someone tells you how they found someone, not how they. Ma I found him. He was on the side of the road. Right. Eating that can of beans he always ogles. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> In Toronto, yeah. I did the Toronto Dark Comedy Fest, and uh, I was booked on that, and I didn't know what, it, what, what, I, what was happening going into it. And you and I ended up bonding a lot. We were on all the same. I'm pretty sure we did a show together every night, if not two. We roasted the Iron Sheik together twice. Yeah. And wow. If that doesn't bring two people together, I don't know right. what will. <laughs> well, I know what will is doing a live podcast at the Comedy Underground with the Iron Sheik, but finding out that the Iron Sheik can only do about 10 minutes right beforehand. And you're like, oh, okay, was... uh, so me and Mike are just going to sit behind a table at uh, the Underground and just fucking light it up. <laughs> You don't right. understand, like, the, the people who are fans of the Iron Sheik aren't wrestling fans. They're the people who yell o o Doyle rules unironically <laughs> and fist things they don't love and just want to see a dying man die. And so it's weird to entertain them because they just want to see a train wreck be a train. They basically just want to watch a fire and put a flamethrower to it. That's basically... <laughs> 
what an Iron Sheik audience is like. And we were just like, what do we do here? And just kind of pointed out the absurdity of that, and they liked it. Right, because they were high as fuck because it was the underground. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was unbelievable. And the recording of that podcast, of that live podcast, went out almost immediately and uh, never turned into anything. Oh, yeah, so that's why, I mean... It's just weird that there's, like, the East Coast comics. You, like, you barely know them as a West Coast comics. The only way you know them is if they happen to, like, visit or, yeah. or something yeah. like that. But there's, like, a whole group of people that do the same thing as I do. I have no idea who they are. And, like, oh, you, yeah. It's like, it just blows my mind. It's just... It's different. You know, I, I... He's like, how is this about my ass? I know. <laughs> we're, it's it's, it's, it's going to wrap up. Bring it around. Around. This, this, is meant to, this is meant to inspire you. We, yeah, yeah. We, we, we figured you had to be this close. When to, you roast uh, the Iron Sheik. This, <laughs> <laughs> that work is available. Um, no, but like, what's interesting, The biggest the, the, there are two big differences about New York. One, New York, you can get up as much as you want. It is yeah. not quality stage time, but it's quantity stage time. I... Sometimes we get up 15 to 20 times a week. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And that's you because you, it's there. And that's like even open mics. Like there, there are open mics running from five, no, from 4 p.m. to midnight every night of the week if you want to look for them. And they're there. They're not good, but you'll get your fucking muscles. Yeah, you know? you'll get strong. You got to put in 10,000 hours before you can become successful. That's the secret. And we chip away one minute at a time here. And um, the other, the other thing is. L.A. loves its weirdos. You, I, the, the weird, like I see people in in costumes and their own like merch and stuff here, and people love that. New York, we just don't have the tolerance for that. Like, get the fuck out of here with that. Like the like the the, the, the a, a first month open micer here will already have a web series. And in New York, they're like, I just, I just want to be good enough to carry my backpack with pride as the 27-year-old man that I am. <laughs> it is interesting, the differences. I just got to hang out with Ari Shafir, who's back in L.A. today. Great guy, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's been in New York for a while. You guys cross paths? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love Ari. Anyway, so Frank. He's just <laughs> you know what it's like Sweet. to feel homeless now. You've been uh, standing there yeah. for 10 minutes. I hope someone acknowledges me. God, how am I going to make money off this shit? <laughs> are they going to acknowledge me or are you going to be a piece of shit? <laughs> um, so, fuck yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's like a good story to base tags off of. If you could smoke a bunch of weed and like throw little tags in between the story, <laughs> that, that makes sense. I mean, the story was does make sense and you know it's very accurate mm -hmm. and it's real so you can like you know pull from that but if you could th write three or four tags and throw it in that story then you have something but it's just a a like yeah that makes sense kind of story is yeah. not gonna you, know. yeah. you already know this yeah. so well i like your energy i like you thank being you. yourself you. and like i feel like you're like a co-worker like if we worked at like a print shop together or something you'd be telling me that and we'd be standing by the printer laughing like for real them <laughs> I've seen that bump too. Like it just seems like it'd be cool to talk to you and just be a friend of yours. So just like, and, and if, you know, it just feels more personal. So I like your style and I like you. So right. and map yeah. the laugh side when you're doing a one minute set or a story like that. Make sure there are punches every ten to fifteen seconds. Yeah, they don't have to be big, but just something, something to grab cool. us and keep our attention. There he goes, Frank Castillo. Much, He's yeah. at Frank C Comedy on Twitter. Yeah, Frank Castillo. Who's next? Okay. Here we go. Put your hands together for Benjamin Carver, everybody. Great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say... Hey, how you guys doing? So, speaking of pussy, $5, right? How you doing? I love chocolate women. Without you girls, there'd be no flavor in this world. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want my next kid to have an afro. You believe that? Because, I mean, you're the, you know, chocolate girls don't fight, they win. So I figure, you know, you still have the tip, you're going to be arguing. But let's make it happen. Okay. <laughs> or, or I don't know, I just had to say that. <laughs> I just want to give him the taste of their own medicine real quick. He looks like the drunken Jesus that lost his hair at a bar fight. He looks like the, um, the, like the gay dude at a nail salon. He's a cool stoner on the podcast. I'm just saying, wait, he is a cool stoner on the podcast. Or podcast. Well, fuck it. Uh, thought it was Dennis Rodman and fucking uh, Miley Cyrus over there on a date. I don't know, I'm just trying to give you a taste of your own medicine. I don't know, it looks like it's not working. Also, 
I was on the bus with this guy. How you doing, Iron Man? Yeah, I saw you. I know after the movie. I shit. I use public transportation, I guess. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Listen for the cat. Listen for that cat. You don't do that. This is the longest minute that you'll ever spend. Fuck it. Yeah. Oh. I guess, yeah, you I ever got... see a Jay who should be a silent Bob? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Chong just brought the show to a cheeching halt. <gasps> huh? Cheeching you don't like how it feels, huh? I love huh? it. I love it. Gotta, Get gotta, him. You, gotta, you gotta fight back. Get him. Uh, actually, uh, I start tomorrow. I start a. Uh, I got hired to do a comedy skit for a TV show that airs in Russia, so I'm kind of excited. Finally in got Russia? Picked. Yeah, I know. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? It's yeah. called Omissions Report. You can Google it right now. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just glad I got, you know, uh, hired, so I'm just Fuck down yeah. here for that. You gonna play in Soviet right Union, you don't you know bomb on stage. Stage bombs Stoner. on you. <laughs> well, I've never performed here, so I mean, I do it in San Diego. But why saying, yeah. why would you spend your whole set just making fun of people if you never performed here and you want to yeah. make an impression? Oof. That's just me. Like, especially trying oh, yeah. to clown me, a black woman. I mean, you look like Lil Kim. Thank you. Because of the mole, I'm just Thank saying. you. I look yeah. better than that bitch. And Let's Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, you got the booty. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I that. appreciate that. You got to get your Mac game up, though. You come talking to a black <laughs> woman like you can <laughs> fuck the shit out of her. You need to have some fucking game. I'm yeah. just saying. I know when I start racking in more money, it'll happen. You look like you're a fan on. of chocolate, but not women, so. <laughs> 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 yes! Tell it! Hey, I'm yes. the only one man enough to talk to. <laughs> no, everybody talks to you. Know you're wearing, you know you're wearing a grateful to treat her like another comic. <laughs> so you know you're wearing a grateful dead shirt right now. You know I am. He grateful died on stage tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he grateful died. That was good, yeah. Benjamin. There you go, man. Yeah, there appreciate you go. it. He won't <laughs> survive. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You gotta get up on stage more and write some jokes. Oh, I got a shitload of stuff. I just wanted to uh, roast you guys too. Let's go see what you guys are doing. Okay. You, gave, you guys look like you're applying for a dispensary, by the way. Just like on the. Public go. board and shit. I'm Still saying. trying. For there you go. There it's almost go. working. All right, guys, have a good one. Okay, Bye, you too. Bye. The little pothead that could. The little pothead. I was trying to figure out if that was a Kik Kinko's beanie or a FedEx. Like, what kind of beanie was that? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that too. That Seatless. Yeah, well, you know, know another thing that's cool, I don't know if I got to mention this to you guys beforehand, but we have two regulars that uh, go on every uh, Monday night. They do 60 seconds each. And, uh, and he's like, and you just saw both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, fuck yeah. And uh, I'm really excited <laughs> about it. Uh, put your hands together for uh, Sarah Wineshank, everybody. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> You guys ever see these people that have their sunglasses fastened to a rope? They wear them around their necks. It's weird. It's like thick glasses, bro. Now you'll never lose them. Because they're on a rope around your neck. It's always these dudes that think they're so extreme. Like, they're so extreme that they have to have their glasses tied on a rope around their necks. What, are the, what the fuck are they doing? Are they jousting, rock climbing? In what emergency are you gonna need your sunglasses? You know what I'm saying? It's fucking weird. And the cheaper the sunglass, the more likely the rope. Like, no one who has nice sunglasses feels inclined to tie them on a rope. It's always the poor motherfuckers trying to hold on, you know? Their lives are so action-packed, so extreme. Wow, that's Killing so it. funny. Jesus Christ. That's so funny. Wow. She ready. Get what? it, girl. And Thanks, I like girl. your skirt. Sailor Thanks, Moon girl. style. Thanks, girl. <laughs> yeah. You're so right about the cost of the glasses, it's too, amazing. and the rope. That's just fucking yeah. hilarious. That is really, really funny. Nobody. How much more did you have about that? Because it seemed like you could have kept going. Yeah, I like that. 
Um, yeah, it's hard to tell whether you had more or you were just about to start pulling a Frank Castillo and just describing <laughs> things over and over well, again. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, I'm staring at the guy with a rope around his... Um, the homeless man's <laughs> name was James. He was 35 years old. I was, like, trying to take my time. I, I was nearing the end. Right. It could have gotten weird. Like, had it been, like, a minute... Oh, three would have been weird. Interesting. I really like it how it uh, how it is. Like I think you're getting it out there just enough. The information, and with your style and with the other things that uh, irk you and those other goofy things, I think that all really goes well together. Um, fuck yeah, R rope around the neck. Like what is so important? There's almost nothing else that people keep ropes around their neck of things. Bus passes, mental disability, illness cards. Uh, <laughs> yep. It's a whole lot of things. Yep, and uh, it's all whole life savings. This is a multi-purpose <laughs> rope right here. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's an accessory. But that, yeah. but exactly what she just said all goes with what you're saying. Yeah. Like yeah. even yeah. anything on a rope is That's it true. never is. Rich yeah, person, like stuff. a house kid, it's like never, a latch, you never latch see kid, <laughs> one of the latch key kids. <laughs> they always you, got they you never see keys. anybody's Maserati key connected to a rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just bought a pair of glasses, and they were sports glasses, I guess, for uh -oh. fishermen. And they did come with a rope already, but it came with like a big round thing that if you lose it, it floats. And so it's like this a big buoy? walk that connects to the back of your rope. So you have a buoy on your fucking <laughs> yeah, glasses. I do. That's so funny. Because and you never thinking, get in water. Yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah. Anything with a rope like, on it seems like something a grandfather passes on to you. <laughs> yeah. Take this, my son. That's yeah. Yeah, I feel like Red Band, when I was thinking of people that might have ropes on their glasses, I was like, maybe Red Band. Oh, what? Well, I don't know. I feel like I, I have seen you many. with a rope I, on your glasses. I've never had ropes on my sunglasses. <laughs> Like, yeah. I love how defensive you get up. Why would you think that about me? Dare you, sir? That I would ever have a rope on my sunglasses. Blasphemer! Who is you to think that I have had a rope you know, on my sunglasses? Here, here's a weird thing, though. I used to always go to the, the the mall and buy those two pairs of sunglasses for fifteen bucks or whatever that shit is, because you usually can find a good pair. The and flying J. Yeah, but I would buy like like twelve a year, fourteen a year, because I would lose them like every week. I bought a pair right. of expensive sunglasses recently. It's, I've had them for like eight months. It makes no sense because I, I don't do anything really different with them. It's just mm. I don't know with, with this that guy with the sunglasses around his throat, would he would he be fucking with those on too? Like, could you imagine like the dude uh, like yeah, trying to probably. do it to you? Maybe, maybe the glasses that, maybe, are hanging over your face. Like, <laughs> but maybe that's like, exactly the opposite of that. Is you know what he'll never need those on a rope for is because he'll ever be getting laid so hard <laughs> that his sunglasses yeah. might fall off. I don't I don't own sunglasses. I just sit in the front of every wrestling event and hope Bret Hart gives me his someday. <laughs> Oh, wow! I can good. just I can just see the tweets of the wrestling fans. That <laughs> with, with That's how I knew kids had that. money when they could get the glasses. And I went one time, and we were all the way in the nosebleeds. And my dad was like, "He's not coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> He's not walking up here. It's too <laughs> far." Oh, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> Sarah Weinshank, another great Sarah. Good job, she Sarah. She's on yeah. Twitter at God Princess damn. Shank. That's the word Princess S H E N K not at Princess killing. Shank. So fun. And uh, this is uh, our other regular. She dropped out of college at Florida State University. Florida, home of the Gators. And uh, um, she dropped out before. after her first time ever doing stand-up on this show. Here she is, Kim Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Woo! What's up, guys? Uh, I want to tell you something funny that I read earlier. Um, a little fact. Did you know that 50% of people wipe sitting down and 50% of people wipe standing up? And that most people don't know that the opposite exists? What a bunch of assholes. Uh, speaking of assholes, I'm single now. Uh, I was dating someone for a while and it was cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, things got weird though. Things got a little bit abusive, uh, but he's doing okay now, and I apologize, and I think that he should have just made me that sandwich. Uh, I don't know. I just don't think I'm someone to fuck with, you know? Like, I brush my teeth, and I rinse with orange juice. He should have known. 
That's it. <laughs> Um, How long was that? 54 seconds, 55. Yep. Uh, fuck yeah. I don't get the rinse with orange juice thing. It know. tastes terrible. It's, it's yeah. fucking awful. Have oh, you ever so done it? You tough. It's, it's, it's badass. Nasty. That's that's pretty rough, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. The three times I've brushed my teeth, I mean, I, I drank orange juice afterwards <laughs> and it was horrendous. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> the three times he brushed his teeth. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the one thing that I noticed was that uh, the first words out of your mouth were, I'm going to tell you something funny. Mm. I don't know. Like, I just feel like you're raising a bar. Right. And, like, a, and it, it, no, I'm being, like, serious. It's, uh, I yeah, just I mean, think that's a very weird thing to say at the top of anything. Like, even if it was, I'm going to tell you something funny that I just read. It's like, well, then you read something? Like, what are yeah. we doing? Yeah. Almost. I, I mean, just it's better saying, to go up and say, uh, I'm I hoping f- to get booked on the Museum of Tolerance. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would just get into, I read, if you're going to do a bit about that or, or about anything. Yeah. Okay. I got a strange story to tell you about or okay. a new right. interesting fact I learned. Yeah. Okay. What I learned today yeah. is that. Yeah. Anytime someone's like, here's something funny, you know, it's like. The audience is going to decide that anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. exactly. Right. So if you tell them it's funny, they're like, oh, this is going to be crazy instead of you being an underdog and them wanting to see something funny. Gotcha. Because it's the release of that tension that is laughter. So if they really think that something funny is coming, it could be something really fucking funny. And they're just right. like, uh, oh, OK, so that was it. Right. If the magician's like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it disappear out of this hand, so keep an eye on this. And then he's with both hands, but you're just staring at one hand. That Anyway. The, the abuse joke I like, but I think it needs to go further and, yeah. and go to this point of absurdity because now where it's at, it's just kind of basic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like sandwich, you know, but, but go even further. Give us the whole story. The crazier it is and you overpowering him and, like, because the idea is funny. It's, yeah. it's a great premise, yeah. but it just needs to go further because the way that it is now, it's like, yeah, yeah I guess that did happen. You yeah. Know? Okay. Mike, he shouldn't leave his phone unattended or um, yeah. he should have moved his head when I threw the phone. Like he should learn how to duck. Or, like, even they're like even old, old, you know, stereotypes, like, you know, and that's what he gets for sassing off, you know, yeah, or yeah. just like, <laughs> it's so sad when he had to, you know, and make him purposely masculine like yeah. and then he had to go to the, his construction job the next day and said he fell down some stairs you <laughs> yeah. know okay. yeah i'd get into that more i, I didn't I, I choke might him i hugged original. him with my hands <laughs> i would get into that that one more i would probably lose the asshole one from the top and i wouldn't <laughs> tell people that things are funny that are coming before it happens they're sort of hoping that anyway okay there she is that can really come real quick yep. real, real quick before uh-huh she said uh, you know, 50% stand up and white, 50% sit down. Would that statistic be different for women? And, and if it's just women, is it like 80% sit down? Because they already It's actually them. not, that's not a real statistic. I actually talk about the same thing on stage. It's not 50 50. It's more like uh, 80, whatever. But if it's just women, though, is it higher for just because women sit down? I don't know. This is something. Urinate. This is something you can look we up later. We don't always tonight, sit down when freak. we urinate. Kimberly Congdon, guys. She's at Kimberly Congdon on Twitter. Fuck yeah, it's the Mike squat. Lawrence on Twitter, at Tiffany Haddish. Anything else yeah. you guys got coming up you want to promote? Uh, oh, I'll be on Epic TV February 14th with Jenny McCarthy doing a dirty, sexy, funny Fuck comedy yeah. show. She ready, let's go. Mm-hmm. And I'll be at uh, San Francisco Sketch Fest February 7th and the 8th. Awesome. The comic What's Patriot. Your Twitter? What's your Twitter? The Mike Lawrence. Uh, the Mike Lawrence. Yeah. And Tiffany Haddish. And at Comic Patriot on Twitter, tweeting pictures of himself in the backgrounds of things, tweeting everything about the show that you need to know. I'm Tony Hinchcliffe. Brian. Hey. Look for a big announcement soon for me and Tony. Death Squad was so successful in Texas. We're going to take this very soon. Somewhere. Death Squad. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Hopefully you'll come back again soon and hang out with us. Doug Benson next week. Stay tuned for the Ding Dong Show. She's a